What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Eric and in today's video we're going to be working on a 2001 Chevy Silverado. Now what I'm going to be doing is replacing the fuel pump. The fuel pump on this truck is actually still good however the floating sensor that reads how much gas you have left is bad and also the evap sensor in the pump is also bad throwing a check engine light. So what I'm going to do today is show you guys how to do this uh, step by step. Um, there is a lot of great videos out there however they're all pretty old so I kind of wanted to make an updated video so that you guys can have better quality. These are some of the tools that you're going to need for this job. So I have an electric impact. You can use a ratchet as well. I have a 14 millimeter socket. I have a extension with an 18 millimeter socket. Um, I also have a small little pick. Um, you're also going to need a T30 Torx. You also might need disconnect uh, tools. These are for fuel and AC. You're also going to need a jack stand, a hammer, and a flathead screwdriver. Since the fuel pump on this truck is still working, what I need to do is depressurize the fuel system. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up the electrical center cover here and look for the fuel pump fuse and pull it out, turn on the vehicle, let it run out of gas, and then we'll go ahead and proceed. This truck actually uses a relay, which is right here. So just go ahead and wiggle it out. There you go. So now what I'm going to do is uh, turn on the truck, let it run out of fuel. Once it's run out of fuel, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the battery as well because we're going to be messing with electrical uh, components and we don't want to mess anything up. So go ahead and disconnect your negative battery terminal once your truck has died. Now that we have all of that taken care of, there is a few different methods uh, that you guys can go about when it comes to replacing your fuel pump. You can either drop the tank or lift up the bed. Now, I wouldn't recommend dropping the tank just because you kind of need to have a either a transmission jack or something that's going to allow you to lower down the, the tank without damaging it. And sometimes that can be challenging. So what I find it to be, I guess, the easiest um, is to just lift up the truck bed a little bit. And I'll show you guys how to do that here um, in a second. To make it easier for us to lift um, the bed a little bit, we need to remove the tailgate. So the uh, tailgate does come off pretty easily. So you just go ahead and put this down here. And uh, what you want to do is you kind of lift it up a little bit, just like so. And you guys can see here that there is a little uh, clip here tied down. What you want to do is uh, push up. And then you guys can see that that kind of uh, allows you to pull it out. So you do that on both sides. There you go. All right, so now that you have removed that, technically this uh, tailgate should be free. All you had to do is kind of wiggle it to the side and pull backwards on both sides and uh, this will come out. So now we'll go ahead and disconnect the uh, filler neck on the fuel tank here from the bed. So in order to disconnect it, there should be three fasteners that kind of hold this securely to the uh, bed here. However, you guys can see that there is already two of these fasteners that have been removed. Um, so there is just one right here. This should be a T30. Yep, so it's a T30. You wanna go ahead and unbolt that. Leave your bolt off to the side somewhere so that you don't lose it. And uh, once you have this free, we'll go ahead and go underneath and start disconnecting a few electrical connections and uh, the bed from the frame. So we're gonna go ahead and start disconnecting some of those fasteners that hold down the bed so right now I'm going to start off on the uh, driver's side. Um, we're going to go ahead and remove uh, a few 18 millimeter fasteners that hold down this uh, truck uh, bed onto the frame. So there we have our tank and just above that you guys can see that there is a fastener right there. Uh, so that's the first one you want to remove. Um, all of these fasteners should be 18 millimeters. Um, so go ahead and remove that one first right there. So now that we got that one out, we'll move down here to the rear and there should be another fastener right there. However, it's missing on this truck, uh, but you would also remove that. Um, then you're going to continue going back until you see another fastener. 
The next bolt is going to be near where you store your uh, spare tire. So you just follow that over here to the side. Uh, there's one right here. Um, you're going to have to remove it through this little access hole. Or if you have a right angle impact, uh, that would also work as well. Um, once you remove that, you'll go ahead and go a little bit further back and remove that one as well. Um, there's also an access point through here to remove that. Um, but like I said, if you have a ratchet or something, you guys can also remove that easily by just, you know, removing it that way. Now that we have those two fasteners removed, uh, what we're going to do is also disconnect the wiring looms uh, that connect to the rear uh, of the bed here. So um, just go ahead and pinch these connectors right here and remove them so that you don't risk breaking them when you're doing this. So these, like I said, they just unclip here. It's not too difficult. Press in the tab and remove them. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and loosen up the passenger side fasteners all the way and then we're going to go ahead and reinsert them a few inches back into the bed. We're going to use these fasteners for support so we don't want to remove them completely because then we have a chance of uh, the bed falling and we don't want that. So for some reason, this fastener is missing on this side as well, uh, but you would normally remove that. Um, you want to go ahead and loosen this one up as well, like how we did on the other side. This uh, bed technically should be free besides, you know, those fasteners that we left kind of threaded in. Uh, what you want to do at this point is get yourself some jack stands or some pieces of wood to help you kind of support the bed while you are removing the fuel pump. So I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that here in a second. This is not too heavy, um, so one person is enough. But if you would like extra help, you can get somebody else to help you lift it up while somebody puts the blocks of wood or jack stands there so that uh, it doesn't fall on you. So there you have it. I have the bed supported here with a jack stand. Now the cool thing about this is if you need more space uh, to work with, what you can do is just kind of support this up and lift up the jack here. And uh, it's a lot easier in my opinion than working with the wood. Um, and you guys can see here those fasteners in the back, they're still on there. Um, so there's one right over there in the back, one right here. There should be one there in the middle, however, it's missing. And, uh, well, actually two of them are missing. You guys can see there's one that should be right there, one over here, uh, and the last one over there. But you guys can see that those fasteners are doing their part and supporting the bed. If you remove them completely, the bed could slide down and get damaged. So uh, this is pretty secure. Um, so this gives us enough working area here uh, to remove the pump. Now, if you guys want to make things a lot easier for you, uh, I would recommend to remove the wheel well right here. It's held down by a few plastic clips. Um, this is going to be easier to just work in there, but it's not uh, required to do this. Uh, if you want to make it easier, like I said, go ahead and remove that. So right now we're underneath the bed of the truck here. Um, if you have uh, time what I would recommend is to kind of clean this off before you try to open any of the lines uh, It is a little dusty underneath here, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to do that Also something important to note is you guys can see that there's some wiring here that has been done in the past This pump is not original the original pump would have a square connector So if you are replacing your pump uh, the odds are 
um, you're gonna have to do some wiring uh, because the wiring has changed on these pumps so um, that's something important for you guys to note there um, since this is already uh, done here for me it's gonna save me an extra step but at this point what you would want to do is just start disconnecting these electrical connections and then you're gonna also want to go ahead and disconnect those three lines that go to the pump so I'll start disconnecting these connectors here from the fuel pump now to disconnect these lines there is some tabs on them um, if they're on there uh, so this one does have two tabs right here if you push these down and out they should come out sometimes it helps if you have a little flathead screwdriver that can get you in there one down there we go so the last one's gonna be a little tricky because um, you uh, are gonna probably need a quick disconnect uh, tool to remove it um, there is a little tab in the middle that you need to depress However, if you use a small little pick like this one, you sometimes can get it out. So I'll go ahead and try to do that now. There we go. This is a close up here of the fuel lines. This middle one's gonna be the more difficult one because you need to press those clips here uh, out so that you can pull this line um, so if you can't get it with a small pick you're gonna need a uh, disconnect uh, clips to help you remove them um, you're gonna also want to go ahead and transfer these plastic retaining clips from this pump to your new pump if your new pump does not have them so don't break these all right so now what we need to do is we're gonna need to unscrew this metal uh, cap off the fuel pump now, uh, for this, you're going to use good old flathead and a hammer. Uh, now, before you do that, the fuel pump should have a little plastic clip that kind of secures everything in place. Uh, so that's this guy right here. You want to go ahead and just pop it off from the metal uh, cap so that you don't break it. Um, so once you do that, you can go ahead and just start hammering this guy off. Um, I like to start here in the corner and just kind of tap it out. Make sure not to damage your fuel tank. There you go. There you go. Sometimes it can get a little stuck, but your pump should be free now. So go ahead and pull it out. And you might lose some fuel. All right, so on the left-hand side, we have our old fuel pump. It looks exactly the same as the replacement. There is some minor uh, assembly needed on the new pump, but it's not terribly difficult. Uh, you just gotta clip this floating sensor right in here, and I'll do that right now. And uh, it should clip right in there. I don't have enough strength, there we go. So um, that's what's wrong with this guy right here. The floating sensor here is no longer reading the fuel and the EVAP sensor on the top is defective. Also, it's important to replace your uh, fuel pump gasket. This pump looks like it hasn't been replaced ever. Um, so we have a good brand new one right here that's gonna go in the pump. Um, so you also wanna transfer your top hat here. 
and also the little clips here on the end uh, where your fuel lines connect. So you wanna go ahead and transfer that to your new pump. To remove this little plastic clip, what you need to do is get a small little pick. Go ahead and uh, pry in between the clips here on both sides. Once you have it lifted, go ahead and push out. Now these retaining clips are different sizes. So the smaller one goes on the smaller line uh, right over here. So that just kind of pushes in there into its place. Um, the bigger one goes on this bigger one, obviously. Um, so go ahead and put that on there right now. So there you have it. The pump uh, is pretty much ready to go back in. Something that I kind of didn't like is this gasket here. It kind of doesn't secure uh, on the fuel pump. So just make sure that when you're putting this back on there that it doesn't get kinked or anything because um, it can rip. Um, so at this point, like I said, it's pretty much ready to go back in the truck here. Alright, so before you kind of commit to everything, make sure that your seal is not pinched anywhere. Um, I found it easier to just install the seal first onto the tank. Also, you want to make sure that this little tab kind of fits in to the groove. Um, so you want to make sure that it's lined up. Go ahead and put your uh, metal clip back on. And get your hammer and flathead and just tap it into its place. So that's how your pump uh, needs to look like when you're done installing it. You want to make sure that these uh, grooves right here are all the way back to this metal uh, piece here. There is, I believe, four of these. So you want to make sure that they're all lined up. You also want to make sure your pump is not like at a weird offset. Um, now, uh, the last thing you want to make sure is this little plastic clip. You want to make sure that you secure that back into its little groove. Uh, at this point, you can pretty much connect all your lines back up. Now, go ahead and connect your connector. There you go. So now that we have our replacement pump in, we obviously want to make sure that it works. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect the battery, connect the relay back on, and uh, just make sure that everything works. All right. Give it a few moments to get enough fuel into the fuel filter. There we go. Everything is working as it should now. The fuel is reading correctly before I wasn't getting any uh, correct levels so I'm gonna go ahead and check if there's any leaks coming out of the fuel pump but it seems like everything is dry underneath there so it looks like everything is working properly um, I did have a check engine light for the evap system uh, sensor so I am gonna go ahead and clear that this should fix all of those problems that I was having so now what I'm going to do is just put the bed back down uh, to install it back on. It's pretty much the opposite of what we did to remove it. So I am not going to record that. Um, if you guys did find this video entertaining and useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace out.